So hello guys, just thought I'd make a quick video about this. So I was in my shed and I found this old 12 to, 20, uh, 12 to 240 volt inverter. Um, and I just thought it'd be very useful if I could modify that inverter to have a variable frequency output, kind of like a, a variable frequency drive which you can buy to control induction motors because essentially our siren does use a small shaded pole induction motor. So I just thought, yeah, why don't we take it apart and have a look and see if we can change the frequency. So I took it apart and I saw that it has these two boards here. Now this one we can ignore because all it does, it's a driver board like this one. It's a driver board, but it controls this, which is a this whole area, I believe, is a switch mode power supply, which takes our 12 volts coming from here. You can see that's set to 12 volts and four and a bit amps. But uh, it takes our 12 volts and it sets it up to 240 volts DC. Or, well, actually, 240 volts AC now that I think about it, but obviously at a ridiculously high frequency because these things operate at an extremely high frequency. It then gets rectified and goes through a little bit of filtering, as you can see here. So now we have 240 volts DC or maybe a little bit more. And then that gets turned back into like AC at 50 hertz by these four MOSFETs here. And what controls these MOSFETs is this inverter driver board. Uh, so what I thought what we need to do is uh, change the frequency that this driver board outputs. So it outputs a PWM frequency, probably 50 kilohertz to control those MOSFETs to give 50 hertz. I'd say it's 50 kilohertz with a, a lower duty cycle or something like that. Um, so what I did was I looked at this little chip here, I got the name off it and I downloaded the data sheet first. You can see it here. And I looked through the pinout and that's all fine. And then I can see that we have pins, where are they? Pins five and six, CT and RT. So there are our timing capacitor and our timing resistor. And what they're in charge of doing is if we take a look at the block diagram here, we see this uh, chip, this control chip, has a built-in oscillator. For, for reference, this chip is a AZ7500BC uh, pulse width modulation control chip, but it has its own oscillator which basically controls the chip's internals and lets it output a set PWM. Now, there's a way to adjust the duty cycle in this and all that kind of stuff with this chip, but I won't go into that. We're just interested in the output frequency, and this oscillator does control that. So what I did is I went back to my little um, back to my little board, and I was looking, and I saw pin 5, which is down here. There's pin 5. It isn't connected to anything at all, so there's no timing capacitor used in this circuit, as far as I can see. But pin six was connected to a 130 ohm or 130 kilo ohm resistor to ground, so that's our timing resistor setting it at 50 hertz or 50 kilohertz. So what I did is I desoldered that resistor and I soldered to a red and a black wire in its place. Black is ground, red is positive, if you want to call it that. And connected to that wire, we have a 100 kilo ohm resistor and a 100 kilo ohm potentiometer trimmer pot. And the 100, they're, they're connected in series. This the resistor goes to the center to the wiper center pin of this trimmer pot. And the reason I have a resistor there, 100 kilo ohm resistor, is just to stop it going below 100 kilo ohms, just so as not to damage anything in the in the circuit. There, we can I can experiment later and see if it does want to go any lower, but it just kind of limits our low frequency to whatever I think around 30 hertz. I haven't put this on an oscilloscope yet. But the potentiometer allows us to add an extra 100 kilo ohms of resistance. So we're effectively changing the value of the timer resistor, which thus changes the oscillator value, which of course then changes our output value of our frequency, which should allow us to control the speed of our sirens then. So I will give this a test run. So we're, what, what we're basically doing is building a, a crude VFD, probably not a very efficient one. Now I do have a proper variable frequency drive coming in the post for controlling three phase motors, and you can actually control single phase ones off as well. But I just thought I'd give this a go. I had these these parts lying around so I just thought I'd try it. So we'll give this a go now but just before I do I have to warn you that this is extremely dangerous what I'm doing. This is all out in the open. There is 240 volts DC and AC here so it's extremely dangerous so please do not replicate anything you see here at home. Just sit back watch it and enjoy. So I'll fire this up now. I think it's set to the lowest frequency so we should, it should sound fairly low, it'll be spinning quite slowly, so here we go. And you can hear that there, that's quite a low tone. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna increase it to roughly 50 hertz, which I'll do just by listening to it, because I kinda know what this siren sounds like at this stage, uh, 
at 50 hertz when it's just plugged straight into the wall. And just keep in mind, this is just a test siren I have. It's half taken apart. There's only one rotor in it. It's just for testing different rotor patterns and port ratios and all that stuff. So it's just a single 10 port uh, siren effectively. So I'll start turning this up now, up to around 50 hertz. So yeah, it actually does work quite well, considering it, this inverter probably is, well, most definitely isn't designed to run at probably anything else than 50 or 60 hertz. I'd say that's what they're set up for, tunes for, so it, it probably isn't the most efficient setup, but it just it does work for what we want. So now we'll be able to control the speed of these, so you can, you know, choose what kind of frequency or tone you, you want to hear out of them when I make future videos. So that's grand. Now... As I keep saying, <laughs> keep saying this again and again, I am in the process of making the uh, shutters for this iron electrified. And what I have these, these have, these have arrived now. They're little, as you can see, they're a little tiny little uh, 12 volt or 24 volt actuator. And they have a five, I just squeeze it there, they have a five millimeter stroke. Yeah, just like that. And that's a very small amount of movement, so I'll have to increase that with a lever to open and close the shutters. So I'm working on a design for that now. Just as you can see, like if I put that next to the siren on top of it, the siren's tiny. This is also tiny, but this is nearly still too big. So I have a very little, li I have a very limited amount of space to work with that. So I will try my best to get the design working so that that'll actually do the job. Because I know I could just cheat and use a like a remote control car servo to open and close the flaps. But that'll be the last resort, just because I, I, I kind of feel like that's cheating. Also, it won't be as instant as a, as this would be if I can get it working. Like the original, the Broadmoor Sirens, the Klax and CS8s, they used a big electromagnet to pull the flaps open and close straight away. Like So I, I kind of like to keep it as close as closely related to those as possible. So I will continue working on the design for these. And as soon as I have it ready, I'll post it in the video to show you all. So hope you enjoyed that. Uh, next time you see all this this mess here, it'll be in a nice enclosure. We'll put a frequency meter on it, a proper potentiometer with a knob, so we'll be able to control the sirens in a safer manner. So hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll hopefully see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.